Welcome to the 3C Live Experience, a dynamic, multiracial, fast-growing church with thousands of believers filled with passion for God and for people. Let's join 3C in this live experience. Well, here we are, and on a very, very hot summer's day, we are gathered in the house of the Lord to hear the Word of God. And I want you to determine to lean in, right? Not just with your mind, though you have to activate your mind, you have to listen, but really position your heart for uh, the Word of the Lord. And that's what we're going to do right now. Let's pray over this time together. Father, we are thankful for the Word of God. We declare that to us, this is not a book, this is not a piece of literature, this is not ink on white pages, this is not something that we have on our devices, but we declare to us, this is holy, this is powerful, this is life transforming, this is the voice of God to His people here and now. Speak, Lord, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Our response is we will listen, we will hear, and we pray that we will be transformed so that we may May go into all the world and be the change that's so much needed right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Well, good morning, prisoners of hope. We are continuing with this, this fantastic word that is delivering us from hopelessness. Amen. Yes and despair, and darkness, and depression, and discouragement, and all the demonic activity that wants to imprison us. God has determined that there will be a season on the earth where this word will go forth to liberate his people in the name of Jesus, because COVID has been a confining season. It's been a season of isolation. It's been a season of imprisonment. Amen. <laughs> Not just in our own homes, but our minds and our hearts and, and maybe our finances, our families. But most of all, our hope has been shaken and many, many people have seen an imprisonment. And that's what we spoke about last week. I'm just going to uh, read our main scripture from the previous week. And then we're going to get into today, into part two. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 11 and 12 says, As for you. Shanae, Pretorius, as for you, put your name, put your surname. As for you, 3C, as for you, South Africa, we can put every name in there because the word of God was not for then. It is for every here and every now. Amen. He says, as for you, because of the blood of the covenant, not because you're a special generation, not because you are more holy than anybody else, deserving than anybody else, entitled. No, not because of you, but for you, because of me. What a God. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, say amen. amen. Say for me, because of him. Because of Amen. Yes. He says, Amen. for you, because of me, I'm going to set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Verse 12 says, return you to the stronghold. He says, come back to the stronghold. What is a stronghold? A place of safety, a place of protection, a place of provision, a place actually of freedom. He says, there you will be a prisoner of what? Of hope. Today I declare, and this Zinkley already read to you today, that I will restore double to you. Praise the name of the Lord. So we discussed last week how the promise of liberty, the promise of deliverance, the promise of freedom, the promise of hope really in the stronghold of hope is for every single one of us. Yet we often find ourselves imprisoned by sin, by our souls, and by our situations. Remember, we discussed those three prisons last week and how by the blood of Jesus Christ, we have been delivered. He has the key. He took it away from the devil. The devil devil has no key unless you give him one. But Jesus has the master key that can unlock any door, any prison, any situation, any circumstance, any trouble, any tribulation, any persecution, any pain. Jesus holds the keys of the kingdom of heaven. He has taken away all authority from our enemy. And so through the blood covenant, which is a contract that God has made sealed in the blood of Jesus Christ, a vow 
how that God has made to every single one who would believe you have access to this freedom through the blood of Jesus Christ. No more hopelessness. Turn to your neighbor, say, hey, 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 we're now, enough now. We are finished with hopelessness. We are finished with that. We cannot go back to that prison. No going back. Hallelujah. We are prisoners of hope in the name of Jesus. So let's just quickly remind ourselves what hope is. What did we say last week? What does the Bible teach us about hope? Well, first of all, it's not human. It's not human hope that we are speaking about because human hope is temporary and human hope is superficial. It is not deep. It is not, it has no root. It cannot be sustained over a long period of time. As the situation changes, human hope changes. Are you with me? So we're not speaking about Disney, you know. We're not speaking about magic and, and fairies and, you know, all of those things and happily ever after. We're not speaking about a, a, a something that is a wishful thought or a wishful place. No, no, no. We're speaking of the divine power of God, something supernatural, something heavenly, something that we cannot pay, we cannot earn, we cannot work. We can, there's nothing we can do to create it and there's nothing we can do to obtain it. It is a heavenly gift from our Father above. So hope, the definition of hope is what? A confident expectation for the good. Not a confident expectation of disaster. A confident expectation of the good that is promised in the word of God and it is sealed by the trustworthiness of our God. Hallelujah. I have a confident expectation in every good promise that I read in the word of the Lord because he is trustworthy. I have a confident expectation that the promises of God in my life will be yes and amen. amen. Faith says, I believe God heals. Hope says, I am confident He heals me. Faith says, I believe God provides. Hope says, I am confident He's providing for me. Hallelujah. Do you see the difference there? Faith is the knowing, the confidence, the assurance, the belief. And hope is the expectation connected to my belief that as I believe, so it will be here and now. Yes and amen. Hallelujah. Faith, hope, and love. And so many through this COVID pandemic slipped into a place of hopelessness, though we believe. We believe that He is who He says that He is and that He will do what He said He will do, but we have lost the hope that He will do it for us here and now. And so God really, I believe, positioned us again in a state of hope, a spirit of hope, a divine place of supernatural hope from heaven that says this. We have a confident expectation that everything that the blood of Jesus redeemed is ours, here and now. Hallelujah. Amen. So we said that today we're going to speak about the sources of hope. The sources, where will we find this hope that we need to live this beautiful Christian life that we know God has called us and purposed us unto? Now, every single one that I'm going to list, everything is God. God is the ultimate and infinite, um, you know, source of hope. From everlasting to everlasting, there is hope for all of humanity. But I want to make it a little bit practical and more specific and break down for you how then we see and appropriate God as our source of hope. And the first thing is the revelation of the fatherhood of God. We cannot just know that He is God supreme, God sovereign, God singular, God king, God lord, God judge. 
We have to have a revelation of God as Father. Why? Because it's the fatherhood of God that says no matter where I've been, no matter what I have done, no matter what is happening, He loves me unconditionally. I am not a subject in His kingdom. I am not a slave in His kingdom. I am a child of God. Hallelujah. We have to have a revelation. This is a source of hope. When you look at God, when you look to God and you say, Father, Abba, Father. The book of Romans says, we have a spirit of adoption through whom, through which we cry out, Abba, Father, which translates my darling daddy. I know you are holy. I know you are supremely powerful and sovereignly mighty. I know you are singularly king and God of all of the creation, of all of the universe and beyond. But I'm grateful that I can come to you as my daddy, as my father, as the one who loves me. Ephesians 1 says, before you made the world, you loved me and you chose me to adopt me into your family because this is what you wanted to do and it pleased you greatly. Hallelujah. You know, when the boys were young, we have three of those. Um, They were... What shall we say? They had moments of naughtiness, moments. <laughs> they had lives of naughtiness. And we were out, my husband and I, we were out visiting people. Probably, I can't remember exactly whether we were having a cell or, or just a home visit, but we were doing the work of God. And while we were doing the work of God, they were not very honorable towards this work of God. I don't know what they did. I, the truth never comes out between the three of them. They managed to hide things from us, but they couldn't hide the fact that one child's arm looked very, very weird. And Damien's arm was broken while we were out. God knows how. Um, but I want you to see that when that happened to them, knowing it was not an accident, it was an incident. You know what I'm saying? Hello? Yes? Yes? knowing that they sinned, knowing that they wronged, knowing that they were disobedient. They didn't run from us. They didn't hide from us. We were not the last people to know. We were the first phone call. We were the immediate 911. Dad, can you please move on from God as the one who will punish you to God as the Father when it's your fault, when it's your fault, when it's your fault, when you are guilty, when the sea couldn't wash away your iniquity, when the stain of sin is all over you, when you smell yourself sinning, that you will not look at your condition and go, ooh, I'm going to get into trouble that you will not see him as the punisher. He's the father and he is a good father. You need a revelation of the goodness of your father so that your hope may remain alive when you wrong. As our children called for help, we didn't say to them, well, you don't have the money to have your arm fixed. It needed an operation. We, we went to hospital. He had to have surgery. We didn't hold that bowl over his head for the rest of his life. Why? Because we have the resource. We are able. We are positioned to take care of our children. And when they do the stupidest things, hello, somebody. And when they do the most sinful things, our love is not tainted. Our love is not diminished. Our love is not affected in actual fact. It's opportunity for love to work. Love is most purely love when it's undeserved. And your heavenly father says, I want to show you how much I love you. Can you stop putting all of that stuff on me? It's not who I am. Have a revelation. This is my prayer for us today, that we'll have a revelation of the father heart of God towards all of us because it will put hope in us. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29 says, I have plans for you. You're not random. You're not ridiculously random. You are a righteous result of the love of God in the earth. 
And he says, my plans are all good. I don't want to harm you. Listen to God say to you today, I don't want to harm you. You deserve it. Yes, you are guilty as sin, but I do not want to and I will not harm you. You say, Shanae, but I'm in so much pain. It is working for your good. Just trust Him. It's going to turn around. You're going to come full circle and see the goodness of God in the land of the living. It doesn't say there's an absence of pain. It says, but God's plans will not destroy you, harm you, embarrass you, punish you, make you small. Hallelujah, He's a good Father. He says, my plans are to give you what? What are His plans? To give you a future and a hope. Come on, shout it out. A future and a hope. A future filled with hope. He's a good Father. So first of all, when we have a revelation of Him as Father, we have a source of hope inside of us. If we move on to Jesus, we looked at the Father. Now let's look at the Son. What about the Son is really a source of hope. This is a, an extreme source of hope, the delivering power of Jesus Christ. There's not a demon. There's not a dark power. There's no principality. There's nothing that is evil, not Satan himself and not all of it put together that could stand against the the work and the power of Jesus Christ as he went into the very pit. The Bible says he disarmed all. Hallelujah. Amen. He disarmed all the principalities, the powers, every demonic thing, every dark thing, the devil himself. He says, and he made a public spectacle, triumphing. Hallelujah. He's the champion of champions. You have hope because Christ could not, and, and that could not is an eternal could not be defeated. Amen. He cannot, he will not, he was not defeated then and it remains true for you today. There is nothing impossible with God. There is nothing too difficult for God. Jesus is the triumphant champion. Hallelujah. So when you think of Christ on the cross, don't see the defeat of the humanity. Don't see the humiliation of the flesh. Don't see, oh, the way that the devil interpreted the cross. He had no revelation why. It is a mystery how that could be the triumph of humanity. When we look at the cross, we see victory upon victory upon victory upon victory. We see deliverance upon deliverance upon deliverance upon deliverance. When we look at Christ, we have hope that for this little thing, right, that we're going through, compared to the sin of all of humanity, your thing is a little thing. Yes. If He conquered that, He can help you conquer this. In Christ, through Christ, we can do all things. Psalm 65 says in verse 5, He faithfully answers our prayers. He is our Savior. He rescues us. He is the hope of everyone on the earth, even those on distant seas. And often I feel like I'm on a distant sea. It feels to me like life and it, the storms of life and the pressures, the tribulations, the persecutions has set me on a sea. And I am far away from where I want to be, far away from where I wish to be, far away from who I should be on a distant sea. He says, no matter the distance, no matter the darkness, no matter where you find yourself, you are tethered to me. You are chained to me. You are anchored to me. And the anchor will hold. Shanae, no matter how far life takes you. You know, there is hope because Christ is in me. He's the hope of glory. And here the word of God says there is hope for everyone on earth, even for those on distant seas. So if you feel distant, have hope that even though you, are, you cannot fall off of the horizon because you are tied to your purpose, you are tied to your destiny, you are tied to God through hope in Christ Jesus, yes. the triumphant Savior. Hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Spirit now. So the Father, the goodness of the Father, the love of the Father, Jesus Christ, the deliverer, the rescuer, the Savior, and the Holy Spirit, our ever-present help. Yes. Our ever-present help in time of trouble with the resurrection power. He stands with us with the resurrection power. He says, okay, all right, I see it. Can you have hope so that the power can go into motion? Can you have hope so the power can be released? 
The Holy Spirit, Romans 15, 13 says, may God, the God of hope, not the God of hopelessness, May He fill you with joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I remember as a young, young child, I was five or six years old, um, and I would visit my grandmother often and sleep over at her house. And I often suffered nightmares when I went to bed at night. And I remember very well that when I slept there, she would sleep with me in the guest room. Me and her, we would sleep. It was like a three-quarter bed and she would hold me tight. You know what I would tell the devil? Come! Come now! You want to come with your night? I was five years old. I said to him, I said, come! Come Come now! You want to give me nightmares? Bring them tonight! Why? Because as she was holding me, she could pray, that woman. She could pray. She could pray. I knew that no matter what he threw against me, if I was with her, all I had to say to her is, Nana, he's here. Pray. And when she prayed, the presence of God, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I had such confidence when I was in her arms. The Holy Spirit is right there holding you. Where's your confidence? Where's your hope? You can say to the devil, and not that we're inviting him. I was stupid. I was five. You hear me? We don't have to invite evil. There's enough evil all around. But if you become aware of the embrace of the Holy Spirit and you understand that the power that transcends life and death and the power that defeated all of the devil in the Holy Spirit is around you and not only around you, she could only embrace me, but now he is within me. Amen. I can say I'm not intimidated. I am unafraid. I am unshakable in my hope because the power that is with me is greater than the power that is with you. Greater is He in me than he that is in the world. I have hope that I'm going to get through this situation because the Holy Spirit is in me. The Holy Spirit is with me. The Holy Spirit is for me. Hallelujah. The Father in His goodness, the Son in His deliverance, the Spirit in His power. These are sources of hope. If we move on, uh, the Word of God, the Word, the written Word of God, it says in Job 4, listen to this. He says, when you stumble, your Word, your Word will put my stumbling feet up, up, up straight. It says, put fresh hope in the message translation, in people who are about to collapse. You feel like you're about to collapse? Many of us under the pressures of COVID, under the pressures of the economic decline, under the pressures of whatever you are facing, you feel like, God, this marriage, this marriage is ready to collapse. This family is ready to collapse. My heart is ready to collapse. God says, well, be in the Word because it's a constant source of hope. As you want to collapse, the Word comes and it builds you up and it pulls you out of that darkness and it prophesies to you and it declares to you and it proclaims over you, no, you will not be defeated, crushed though that you are pressured and perplexed. Hallelujah. Fresh hope in those who are about to collapse the Word of God. And then prayer. Prayer is a source of hope. Turn to God in prayer. Turn to God in prayer. This happened to me after I got out of ICU many years ago. I was really wrestling with God about why this happened to me. And and listen to this, Lamentation 3.29. It says, bow in prayer, stop with your questions and wait for my hope to appear. (laughs) Because I was asking all the wrong questions. I was asking why uh, instead of how. How will hope return? Father, show me. Show me the way to glorify you. Show me how to walk through. Show me the other side of all of this. Not why. And I love how it says in the New King James, when you put your mouth in the dust, knowing that you are dust, you cannot save yourself. Knowing that all the people, all the riches, all the resource of the earth is but dust and there is no delivering power in the dust. He says, as you lay down and you put your mouth in the dust, you declare, there is hope yet. Amen. You cannot go lower than in the dust. The dust in the dust. He says, but even in that place at the lowest point of your life, you know that you know that you know as you cry to God in prayer, hope appears inside of you. Hope yet. 
Hallelujah. Tribulations produce hope. We know this, Romans 5. Tribulation produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character and character produces hope. You pray to God. I want to have hope. I want to be found a prisoner of hope. I want to be on an ocean of hope. He says, yes, there is a path that leads there. Tribulation. You go, is there another way? (laughs) Is there another way, Jesus? He says, this is the path to great hope, oceans of hope when we go through tribulations. And number seven, the last source of hope I want to mention to you, 1 Thessalonians 2 and 19, he says, what is our hope? He's speaking to the believers. He's speaking to the church. He's speaking to his disciples. He says, is it not you? Hallelujah. When I look at you, you are why I got up this morning. You are why I am excited this morning. You, 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 whether you are alone in your home, in your office, in your car, listening on a radio, on YouTube or Facebook or in a building, it doesn't matter how good you are, how spiritual you are, how whatever you know you are, (laughs) you there, you showing up, you willing, you faithful. He says, it's such a source of hope for me. Hallelujah. So let's find hope in the right company. You hang around hopeless people, that spirit of hopelessness, hey, you're going to wear it as a garment on your way out that house. Hang around people who are full of hope, who encourage you, who inspire you, who motivate you, who speak the word over your life. Amen. Amen. It is you. It is you. Now let's just quickly look at the results of hope. What are the results? We've looked at the sources. Yes, we've looked at seven places, appropriations of the spirit of hope, the divine gift that God has for your life. Now let's see what it looks like. Hallelujah. Where's the evidence? Show me the fruit. Hallelujah. There's a reward when you walk in the spirit of hope. And Psalm 130 verse 7, the first result of hope is that there is a spirit of redemption upon you. Everywhere you go, deliverance follows. Everywhere you go, people get saved. Everywhere you go, there is a breaking of chains and a pulling down of strongholds and a canceling of arguments. Why? It says when we hope in the Lord, the Lord of unfailing love, His redemption overflows. I am redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed. But redemption is not so I can go around and say that as a boast, but rather say it as an invitation. An overflow of redemption. There is hope for your marriage. There is hope for your family. There's hope for your finances, your heart, your mind, your body, your soul, your everything. (laughs) An overflow of the redemptive power of God. When we walk in hope, we walk as instruments of redemption. Isn't that beautiful? Number two, radiance. Romans 15 and verse 13 says, God is the inspiration and God is the fountain of hope. If He fills you, it goes on, long line there, long verse, but at the end it says, He will fill you with the hope of His Spirit until you radiate with hope. Remember, when Moses came down that mountain, it says, like lightning bolts. He radiated the glory of God. We've become so dull. Don't blame your mask. You don't need to see your mouth to see you radiate with hope. Hallelujah. It should shoot out of your head. When you walk into a room, the presence of God, the the, the hope of God should literally radiate from you. Load shedding and all. Don't you blame ESCOM. Don't you blame COVID for the dullness and the darkness of the hour when we are the light. But if we have no hope, We're as dull as dull can be. Huh? So I'm just here preaching myself happy. Praise Jesus. We will be the change the world needs. We will radiate Jesus in this dark hour. We will have a redemptive power working through us, a radiance that is attractive. There's nothing more beautiful in darkness than light. Yes, it attracts all kinds of creatures. Hallelujah, right? but so that they may come into the kingdom of God. Number three, strength. Who's been a little bit uh, weary, overwhelmed, collapsible? (laughs) He says, if you have hope, here's the reward of hope. Your strength is renewed. Isaiah 40 and verse 31. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. God, make me strong. Shanae, have hope. God, give me strength. Shanae, stand firm in hope. Hallelujah. Hope 
fruit strength. Amen? Amen. If you hope in the Lord, you will renew your strength. Soar on wings like eagles. Run and not grow weary. Walk and not be faint. The young ones will run and not be weary. The older ones will walk and will not faint. But all of us will soar and not be here contained in the dust like chickens. Amen. 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 Strength for the circumstances we are facing right now. From where? From hope. Joy, hallelujah. Psalm 146 verse 5 says, Joyful are those who have God as their helper, whose hope is in the Lord. So you are positioned with a redemptive power about you, a saving grace working through you, the radiance of Jesus filling every room, every boardroom, every gym room, every wherever room you go. Amen. Amen. And there's a strength about you, a determination, a tenacity, a courage, a boldness, a roar. Hallelujah. Because you are fixed in hope and there is joy. It's, it's, it's not a cruel and an unkind, you know, and a sad hope. <laughs> it is a hope full of joy. And I love Isaiah 26, number five. The joy that we have also, he says, we have peace. I will guard him, listen, keep him in perfect and constant peace. Not a little bit, little bit of peace some of the time. Perfect peace all of the time. Hey! Yes, come on. Hello! <laughs> Not peace on Sundays. Not peace in church. And when you get in the car, the peace out the window. Close the window. No, 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 no. Perfect peace all of the time. A constant, perfect peace will guard you if your hope is confidently in the Lord your God. Amen. You have many promises. God has prophesied over your family, over your marriage, over your job. God has prophesied, listen to me, 3C, over your ministry. You will be fruitful. You will multiply. You will fill, subdue, and have dominion. This is your original design. This is the promise. Yes, Janae, I believe it. Well, where's your hope? Where's your confident expectation? Someone new is coming to sell this week. Someone's getting saved in church this Sunday. I am going to be an instrument in the hand of God, an arrow in the quiver of the most accurate archer. Hallelujah. Amen. God wants to fulfill His promises in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. You have to position yourself in hope when it's hopeless. <laughs> it's a choice. Turn to your neighbor, say, I choose hope. I choose hope. I choose it. Hallelujah, I choose hope. And number seven, the last one. I, I really, really, when I read this, my heart leapt within me. As we were waiting for election results to roll in and they trickled in for three days and we still don't really know who's where doing what. Just considering the landscape of our beautiful nation, I read this, Psalm 37 and verse 34. It says, when you put your hope in the Lord and you continue to travel steadily along His path, He will honor you. Listen, listen. He will honor you by giving you the land. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the land here is not about um, title deeds, but it's about what? Spiritual territory. <sighs> Put your hope in the Lord. We love our politicians. We pray for our politicians. We have a human hope in institutions, but we have a divine hope in our God to give back the territory that is South Africa to the righteous, to those who love the Lord, that we can go into schools and universities, that we can go into corporations, that we can go into every place where God has given us influence and say, this land belongs to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. When we have hope for a nation, generations will live in the fruit of our hope. I believe that God is saying there's a restoration. What did we read? What was our original text? Double for what was lost. Double for what was lost. Restore to us this beautiful land, Lord. Give us back the territory uh, into the hands of the righteous. Amen. Are you excited this morning? Yes. Are you hopeful this morning? Yes. 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 Do you want to say hope? 
full stop, fully. Right? Hope, full stop, fully. Amen. Fully. Fully. Not part, not now and then, fully, always. Full of hope all the time by the grace of God. As you walked in, and if you are online, hopefully you have seen all the many uh, notices that it is communion today. If you are in the buildings, there should be communion uh, under your seat right now. <laughs> I hope you didn't sit on it. There we go. And here is the evidence. He says, all these sources and all these rewards, how do you know that it is for you, that it is for now? He says, you have to only look at one place. One place, one place, one place. The cross of Jesus Christ is the evidence of the hope of God alive towards us, alive within us. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? And so we're going to partake of communion together today. If you can just take it in your hand. But before we partake of it, we're going to pray for those uh, who have not yet received Jesus Christ. And I want us everywhere, every building, every home, every office space, wherever you may be, why don't you just stand to your feet as we honor the holiness of the table of the Lord. And this moment where we can pray with those who are to be saved right now. Right now, redemption is available for you. This love we spoke about, this hope we spoke about, this future that is filled with goodness, this Father that will never reject you, abandon you, disappoint you in any way, this Savior that is more powerful than your strongest enemy, this Spirit that will be with you through everything. How? How do you get there? Going to church, reading a Bible? No. Being good, being moral, being generous? No. Studying theology? No. He says, you must be born of me. As you were born of your parents and you became theirs, you are born of me and you, beca you become mine. How? He says, you must believe and then say with your mouth. Amen. Believe that Jesus on that cross died for you and then say it with your mouth. See, did you know that when you speak, those sound waves are eternal? They transcend this universe. When you say, I believe in Jesus Christ, heaven goes into motion. And miracles start happening. The first of which is your regeneration and your positioning in the family. I wanna pray with you if you've never done that. And in the, every building and wherever you are watching and listening from, this prayer is for you. So just for a moment, will you close your eyes and consider whether the Holy Spirit is inviting you. I believe if you are not saved yet, I believe if you are backslidden, right now the Spirit of God is tugging at your heart saying this moment is holy. This moment was purposed. This moment is for you. I love you. I want to save you. On the count of three, I want you to respond with a yes. See, it's an invitation. It's not a manipulation. It's an invitation. You have a choice. Will you receive Christ? So if you're saying yes, Shanae, please pray with me. I want to receive Jesus. Just there where you are and here where you are with me. I want you to respond with a yes. As an indication, you can also raise your hand. One, two, three. Let me see your hand as you say yes in your heart to the saving grace of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. There are many hands. God bless you. You can put your hand down. We always ask a second time because for many of us, there's an intellectual war going on right now. But I'm not a bad person. I haven't murdered anybody. I haven't done this. I haven't done that. Look at me, how much I gave to charity. Look at me, how many people I helped during COVID. It's not about what you have done. It's about what He has done and He wants to live in you. The only thing you must do is believe and receive. He will come and do the rest in you. Change your nature, which no amount of charity, generosity, theology, philosophy can change who you are. So just one more time, you didn't respond because you had all excuses happening in your mind. This is for you. Don't reject Jesus. Don't reject God, your loving Father. You didn't raise your hand the first time. You didn't say yes the first time. One, two, three. Won't you do it now? Let me see you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, church. Everybody online as well. Thank you for responding. We're going to pray and then we're going to do communion together. 
ready? So, but first, if you raised your hand, you need Christ, you want to be born again, you want to come back if you've backslidden. Yes, if that's you, won't you step out quickly? If you, every congregation, all of our campuses, won't you come forward? Jesus comes and makes you brand new. There where you are. There where you are. It's not an experience emotionally or physically. It is a spiritual transformation. And we are trusting God because He promises to do it for you. Here in front as well, every campus, won't you just close your eyes and pray with me. Say, Father, Father I come as I am. In response to your love. In response to your love. And I cry out for and salvation. Jesus, forgive me, Jesus, forgive wash me, wash me. Cleanse, me cleanse me of my sin. Of my Thank sin. you for dying Thank in my place in my so place. I may become so a I child of God. Child I confess God. you I as my Lord and my, my Savior. And Say confidently, I am, I am a child of God. Child of I, am I am born again, born again. by the grace of God, the, grace the, love, of the love of God, the power of His Spirit. Amen. Amen. We celebrate you, every single one of you, every single one of you. There'll be a link there. Please, if you prayed this prayer, will you fill that in so that we can connect with you? We want to talk to you about what just happened, celebrate with you, and also about next steps. Are you ready? This is the body of Jesus Christ today, broken for you. This is the blood of Jesus Christ today, shed for you. Do you know the Bible says that when He went to that tree, in His body, in His body, He took every sin, every sickness, every sadness, every sorrow, which means in that body, He took every hopelessness and every prison for everyone. It says it was nailed to the cross so that in the great exchange of this beautiful covenant, you may be hopeful always. You may be free and liberated. So today, especially in line with the message, when we partake of the bread and the blood, we are saying we are done with the prisons of our past. We are done with the darkness. We are done with the hopelessness. We are ready to live according to the word with the hope of Jesus Christ alive within us. The Bible says, don't do this unworthily. Don't, don't just do it familiarly. He says, you understand the power of this is the forgiveness of God and the restoration, the wholeness of God. He says, forgive others so I may forgive you. So right there where you are, if you have offense, if you have bitterness, if you have resentment, if you have issue with any person, just right there where you are, say, I forgive them now. Father, help me release them now. I don't want to hold any offense against any person, any resentment, anger, bitterness. I release it in Jesus' name because I honor the table of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Are you ready? Do you have? It says He broke the bread as it symbolized His broken body. And then He gave to them and they ate. Let's do it today in remembrance of what He did for us. Thank you, Jesus. And so also it says, He took the cup and He gave it to them saying, this is the blood of the new covenant. My blood shed for you. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Thank you for forgiveness, Lord. Thank you for faithfulness. Thank you for a complete work that you've done. As we remember you, we participate in the power of it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. We are going to close with a 
a praise song. But before we do that, and we greet all of our television, radio, online audience, every single one streaming to our campuses, let me read to you in closing Jeremiah 51. It says, don't lose hope. Amen. Don't ever give up. When the rumors pour in hot and heavy, one year it's this, come on. The next year it's that, come on. It says, no matter what comes against you, rumors of violence, rumors of war, it says, don't you ever give up. Don't you ever lose hope. Psalm 131 says, hope now and hope always. Amen. Amen. Church, may that be our declaration. Hope now. Hope always in Jesus' name. Will you raise your hands for the blessing of the Lord? Father, as your children, we now receive your grace multiplied to us, your peace that surpasses all understanding, your divine provision for all that we may need to fulfill our purpose in the earth and the protection of your angels in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Have a beautiful week. We'll see you next Sunday. God bless you. This 3C Live experience was brought to you by the 3C Media Production. For more information, call us on 86 or log on to my3c.tv. Or you could write to us at PO Box 10508 Centurion 0046 or email us at tv at my3c.tv. If you need prayer, SMS the word PRAY followed by your prayer request to 33347 and our team of prayer warriors will pray for you for 30 days. If you would like to become a partner with the ministry, SMS the word PARTNER to 33347 and one of our team members will get back to you within the next few days. You can follow Pastors Bert and Shane Pretorius on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram to be inspired daily by morning devotions, ministry updates and much, much more. Log on to my3c.tv for more information.